me introduce the next guest. It's very difficult because it's a robotic gaming platform, all right? So I, I was thinking, how can I introduce a robotic gaming platform? You help me. You just have to do exactly what I do, okay? Right. All right, let's start. Adam. Adam. Right, you just said Adam. Adam. Wilson. Wilson. Adam. Adam. All right, Adam Wilson, or Botics. A great demo. They produce not only a game, a robotic gaming platform. This fair is great, so I'll let you to the stage. Awesome. Thank you so much for that introduction, Marco. Um, hey, everybody. I'm Adam. Um, we are the creators of Sphero. So this little robot ball over here, I'm going to stand it up so you can see it. So yeah, we are the creators of Sphero, the robotic ball that you can control from your smartphone. And that's pretty awesome in itself. But today, I will talk a little bit about Sphero. But I also want to share with you like, my vision for the future of gaming, what I think, what I think is possible. Um, so, oh, can we get the slides up? So, Sphero is a robotic ball. It has mechanics. It also has two-way wireless communication. And what's really important about that is, you know, we can send commands down to Sphero, but we also receive a lot of information about Sphero's location and telemetry back to the telephone. And that's really, really important for closing the robotic loop, really knowing what your product is doing. And on top of that, we've used our six-axis IMU to send information back to the phone. Now, what's a six-axis IMU, you might ask? It's like a really fancy word for a navigation system. Um, it just lets us know, you know where Sphero is going. Now, on top of that, we have built an API and an SDK, so an API for the ball and an SDK for all the smartphones out there. And that has allowed us to build you know, a suite of apps and games and everything for this ball. So as you can see, this is so much more than just like a remote control ball. This is a robotic gaming system. And really, this stack of bricks right here means nothing to me, unless the gameplay is really fun. That's what our company is motivated by. We are special because everybody there is super motivated by fun. And we've been having fun with physical toys forever. I mean, everybody in here has at one time played with a physical toy, I'm sure. And in the last 30 years, um, we've also fallen in love with virtual games, Angry Birds, Halo, everything like that. So, but until now, these two worlds have been independent of each other. We've never really seen games that are in between the world of the physical and the real. So, but as of today, the technologies exist, the technologies inside of Sphero to bridge the gap of reality. You've heard of buzz terms like augmented reality. Well, we think that there's a whole continuum where the gameplay lives inside of this bridge of reality, where some of the you know, components and functions of that game are physical, and some of the components of that game are virtual. Like, it's a mashup. You've heard that a lot. That's a, that's a thing. You know, Connect and we and everybody is doing that. We're trying to mash the virtual and the real. But our developers actually have um, a different word for all of this stuff right here. And they're calling this the zone of really hard shit. Um, and that's funny to us because we know what it is. We've spent years working on this now, and we know how hard it really is. Um, what's, what's really hard? You might ask yourself, well, yeah, OK, there's a lot of hard things out in the world. Well, using, trying to bridge the virtual and the real uses computer vision, usually. And people in computer vision realize that you know, just now, the technology on our smartphones is good enough to do really good computer vision. It requires a tremendous amount of computational power, you know, new computer vision algorithms, new sensors, new protocols. And really what's really important is a new design for interface. You have to think about it. There's a physical product now involved. It can't just do anything it wants to do. You have to build some of the interface in the physical world. Like, like in Sphero, we have all kinds of shakes and touches and things that are in the real world. But also, some of the interfaces in the virtual world. And they have to play really well together. So this zone, this is where Sphero lives, in that zone of really hard stuff. So I really think that I've 
talked enough about Sphero, I think that it is time for you guys to see Sphero in action. So as my secondary ball goes away, oops. sorry, we have to keep this kind of tethered. Um, OK, so I don't know if everybody can see. Maybe we can get the camera to come down onto the ball. Um, there is a robot ball driving around on the stage here. It's going kind of slow. I have it on a slow speed. But it's just driving around. I have complete control. And that's really interesting. That's neat. Everybody you know, gets a kick out of the robot ball. It's a ball. It's driving around. I have control. I can play games with it. I can play games of tag with my friends with this ball. And while that's really super interesting and fun, that's really not what I'm here to show you today. Um, what I'm here to show you today is you guys all have a different perspective of what this ball is doing than I do. So can we switch over to the, um, the iPad now? So there you go. OK, we have Sharky, which is our 3D character laid on top of that ball. And you can see there's some of the audience. He's just right there. And while we've all seen you know, fiducial-based augmented reality, where it's just stationary, that's not what this is. This can move. Sharky knows which direction he's going here. Woo! So I just fell off the stage here. It's of course, you know, demo nightmare, but whatever. This is Sharky, and that's fun for me. And so you can see that I have a totally different experience with this robot than you do. Oh, pretty close. <laughs> so now what's really interesting is, as you can see down here in, this, in the right-hand corner, there's like a little sphere that has little arrows in it. Now, for a physical toy, maybe let's think of like a remote control toy. You've never been able to drive it forward and then go right and left and then drive it backwards and still have the same right and left, right? Like you drive a remote control car back to you, you've got to figure out which way is right when it's coming back towards you. But with Sphero, we don't have to do that. We, don't, we now have information about this robot's position. We know where he's going. We know where it is in relationship to me. So we're able to build a really believable augmented reality situation here. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but that's pretty realistic to me. He's got a great shadow, and he's got, you know, he stands pretty still for augmented reality. And the trick here is, is that it's a robot. It knows what it's doing. It knows where I am. It knows what this camera is doing. There's like a closed system here. So all those building blocks that you heard me talk about before, you know, the SDK, the IMU, all these things, that's not really that special for, to Sphero. This is just like a vessel. What it is is that's what's necessary to build this robotic gaming system, build something that can see and act, and, and we can interact with the real world and put anything. This is just the character overlaid, but you can imagine that we're going to be playing games where you're running things over, you're smashing windows, you're you know, running over zombies, perhaps. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. And Sharky's very cute, right? Like, super cute. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to come up with later, but we see that the future of gaming really isn't going to be building levels and designing levels. I mean, we'll still have that. You can't play this game. You can't play like Call of Duty like this, and that's what people like to play. But you can really captivate the imagination of children and people just by doing this. So I think this is Sharky's biggest audience he's ever had. So can I just get a little picture of him with all you guys? Awesome. Um, that is it for the, for the demo. That's it for my presentation. Um, I have a few minutes <clears throat> left, and so I'm going to just take some Q&A. If anybody's got any questions, um, if there's anything you need to know about Sphero or anything at all, it's $129.99. Um, you can find it at the Apple Store and all over the place. And really, it's taken us, what, 22 months to get to this point. So I'm an entrepreneur. We started this company 22 months ago with an idea, like, hey, let's make a robot ball. And we got funded, and we made the ball. And so I hope that everybody has a chance to enjoy gaming like this in the future. Thank you so much. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, thank you, Marco. Also can be a pointer, right, like, yeah. uh, like a mouse. You can um, hold Sphero in your hand and play games on the screen. Um, you can do all sorts of things. We also have games that are more like, like a party app. So like we place the thing on the table here, all right. and then you know, it's, and change, play. It's, it's changing colors, and i got to grab it real quick or something all right. really That's fun cool. like that. And so. also, lo I see a lot of apps that you can develop. So oh. if you're a developer, you can develop apps and play right. and so interact with it. So that SDK and API that we talked about, that is all open source. It's all on the internet. And 
we actually have hackathons. We go over, all over the country and let people yeah. make apps. We give and them engage. Spiros and they make apps and you know, we're building a developer economy out of that. Right. So it's super awesome. Excellent. Let's give a big round of applause to Adam, really. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Marco. Adam.